Was she a good client? She was, you know, this is a beautiful woman. And she was the best client I ever had. Uh, why did she need so many shoes? That, that was obviously a point that the thought about Imelda was greed. Well, you know, that the thing that we, they never really understood about Mel, uh, Imelda was that she really wasn't a greedy woman. She was very loved, and she is loved, and she's loved by the masses of people in the Philippines. And the people here, everybody that touched her, saw her, fell in love with her. She is an absolutely marvelous, wonderful human being. She, has, she was gifted, you know, she, she didn't go out and buy this stuff. People gave it to her, her husband gave it to her. Rich people, princes, people just loved her and showered her with gifts and with respect to her shoes. But you know, my, my wife got a hundred pairs of shoes, <laughs> I think. Uh, so what? But in her case, the Philippines, uh, the Philippines oh, country, man manufactured shoes. And everybody that manufactured shoes and had a new model of pair of shoes wanted to have her have those shoes and wanted her to wear them. And if, you, if you'd go back and check her closet out, you'd find that most of them don't, that don't even fit her. Propelled by a country that's impoverished with leaders who appear impoverished, if there is such a word. Uh, leaders who appear to have it all. There's a, she may be popular, but uh, America at, whole, at large does not love her. You'd agree with that? Well, I, America as a whole doesn't really know her. And this man doesn't know her. What he knows, he never met her, never talked to her, never looked into her eyes, never listened to her doesn't know how she feels, knows nothing about her. All he knows is what he's read. And, you know, when I heard about the case, that's what I knew. That's the first, my, my first response was just like his. I, I didn't take this case until I met the woman, talked to her, understood her, listened to her, and began to try to understand who she was as a human being. And uh, that's what a jury did in this case. They listened to the evidence, not what the newspapers said, because in this case, the newspapers had indeed convicted her. And this, as you can see, the great majority of Americans obviously are, are believe that this woman is a bad woman. I, I happen to know who she is. And she's a very, a, a very marvelous woman. He's one of the most successful lawyers in this country. How good is he? The late Edward Bennett Williams, the greatest legal mind I ever knew. When I asked him once, who's the best? Who would you want to defend you if you were in trouble? He said, Jerry Spence. Uh, there was evidence in the case that, uh, that the Philippine government under Aquino wanted to gather up all of this evidence or, or gather up all of this property that they believed belonged to uh, the Philippine government and, uh, and that Marcos uh, had had. And in exchange for that, the United States needed its bases over there. And they entered into what was called the Mutual Legal Assistance Agreement, which was an agreement between these two governments to prosecute the Marcoses. And when Mr. Marcos died, they continued to prosecute Hi. this widow. To the Marcoses, which my question was, if you could elaborate a little more on the British CIA connection to the Marcoses that you mentioned in your opening arguments. I'd be happy to. There isn't Can any... you do that uh, quickly? I've got to get a break, but it is important. There isn't any question but what, uh, but, but, but what Vice President Bush at the time, uh, 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 the Reagan administration, knew exactly what was going on. He knew, and he was the head of the CIA, you'll recall. Knew what was going on. Knew what was, what, what was going on in the Marcos administration and regime. The largest single base of CIA's uh, ba is, is in the Philippines. There wasn't anything that the Marcoses did that the CIA didn't know about. And you know, I found out as I went into this case and listened to the evidence that there wasn't really any evidence that Mr. Marcos was a crook. There wasn't any evidence that he violated any of the laws. That there wasn't really any evidence that Mr. Marcos was a crook. There wasn't any evidence that he violated any of the laws. The government brought over here witness after witness, 95 witnesses, and showered this court with 300,000 documents. And they had the the PCGG, who could do whatever they wanted to with witnesses, 
You're well, saying the Philippines. There's no evidence of you're any saying, violation of the laws by Mr. Marcus mm -hmm. himself. You're saying the Philippines was like a CIA base? CIA, there were more, there, uh, I'm, I'm told there are more CIA people in the Philippines than there are in any other, there were at that time and than any other place.